Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment unfiltered with Pastor David. Uh, we did something a little different on Tuesday where we spoke on communion. And so on Thursdays, we are now we're wanting to focus a little bit more on your upcoming marriage and family series that will happen in June, right around June. And yeah, probably the second week of June or so will begin, and somewhere around there. It's going to be a, I think it's going to be a great series. I and mean, what a, a time in today's time when marriage and family are under attack. Mm. And so today, Pastor, I wanted to speak a little bit, if you would share a little bit on, on the importance of keeping our marriages or even just relationships Christ-centered. Because even in my own life, when I've taken my eyes off the Lord, my life is always choice but loose, right? It's always, it's, and the importance even now in the institution of marriage or even in a relationship, what's the importance of keeping Christ our focal point? Well, you know, we're Christians, you know. When you're a Christian, you're, you're supposed to already have on an individual basis you're already supposed to be building your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ and and what it means to be his follower. I mean, if if that is the focal point of your personal life, your 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 source of identity for yourself, we'll put it that way. If you're a a Christian, well, you know, everything that you do is to be built on the foundation of the word of God and the walk of the spirit and things of that nature, fellowship your prayer life, your service, your giving, all of that's supposed to be centered. And I realize as a young person in the 20s and all, that those are things that you're still sorting out and you're still kind kind of finding yourself in this world as a Christian, especially if you got saved in your 20s, we'll say. So everything is to be built on the Lord Jesus Christ. That would include, of course, the most important personal relationship you have outside of your salvation, which would be your, your marital relationship. And so if somebody is a believer and they want to take somebody out, it, it begins first and foremost on uh, whether that person you want to take out is a believer also. Because you don't want to take an unbeliever out. You, won't, you, you are commanded not to. You're not to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. You know, in the Old Testament you see quite a number of scriptures that relate to God's judgment on the nation of Israel for uh, having marriages with uh, pagan women. And so, you know, that's forbidden in the old and it's reiterated, it's repeated in the new. So we're to be married, Paul said, but only in the Lord. With that said, if you're a Christian, then you're looking for somebody in, you know, in your prayer life, in your heart, and the way that you would seek somebody will say, you're, um, you're looking for somebody who loves Jesus. That, that should be the key. And the second thing is that, and I learned this after being married for several years, somebody came and spoke at our church and, and it locked in something that, that I saw as very important. When this guy said, there's a, a, mish, uh, a man from India who was a uh, pastor in India, he had said before he got married, he had prayed and asked the Lord to please gift him with a woman who loved Jesus more than he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I heard him say, he said, my reasoning behind that was because I love the Lord. And if I married somebody who loves him deeper than I do, it gives me the freedom to grow and to serve the Lord in the way I'm called to because she's going to release me. So it's only going to be a win-win situation, right? Which it was in his case. He married a woman who he asked, uh, what do you want for your uh, birthday? He was giving her a present. She says, I want a bullhorn so I can stand on the street corners and preach to people about Jesus Christ, right? So, so you need to make sure that you're, you're praying according to the will of the Lord and seeking somebody that loves him and even going so far as to say, Lord, may this person love you so much that it encourages me to love you with all of my heart. So it all begins on the foundation of your faith in Christ and your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. You would never want to date somebody who will keep you away from Jesus. You never want to be in, in, engaged to and then marry someone who says eventually it's either Jesus or me. I, I've heard that more than once where that has happened in a man's life. I remember speaking to a man on one uh, occasion and he, he came to share with me. He wanted to uh, sell me radio time on a particular station. 
And he said, you know, um, before I started selling Radio Time, I was a pastor. And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean you were a pastor? He says, I had to quit the ministry. I said, why is that? He said, because my wife said to me, either it's pastoring or your marriage. It's not going to be both. So you want to make sure that you marry a person who loves the Lord. You need to make sure that you first and foremost love the Lord. And then that, uh, that, that combination of your love for Christ and her love for Christ and, and the knowledge of his love for you, that will cement you in your relationship. And then the rest of the, the marriage can be built on that. And the importance of spending time in the Word together, praying together, keeping Christ-centered. As we mentioned, and we want to wrap it up with this, Pastor. We want to be sensitive to our, t- our listeners. Uh, the different attacks on the marriage, uh, even today, is the importance of focusing on God's Word. Well, you know, God's Word gives us instruction. I don't see how I can be equipped for the battle if I don't know the manual. And... Uh, you know, if, if Satan worked to destroy the first marriage, uh, what makes us think that he doesn't continue to destroy marriage? In the first nine chapters of Genesis, you find three institutions that were established were, that were intended for the betterment of man, and, and it was the church, and it was government, and it was marriage. And those are the things that every society should be built on, you know, a faith in God, and relation, relationship and a government that is under the authority of God. I mean, that's, that would have been his design, seeing that Adam fell, he, and he put that design in place after the fall. But that's what you see. And so, yeah, I would, I would believe that if, if, especially in these days where people are talking about um, their test or their trial marriage, see if it works. Oh, I learned some lessons, and now I can get married and be successful. So, you use somebody's life as a test tube to discover what your own weaknesses and selfishnesses are. You, you need somebody else that you abandon them so you can be a better person for somebody else. Entering into a relationship with that mentality is a recipe for disaster. It's a, rep- a recipe for divorce. That's what's going to happen if you don't die to self. If the husband doesn't wash his water with the word, if he doesn't act in sacrificial way the way Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Um, how do you expect your marriage to make it when it's built on you and your selfishness? And and let's face it, you know, um, we already are inclined to taking care of ourselves. It's uh, dying to self when two, two people together die to self that that new entity, that one flesh, can actually thrive. So if I'm constantly trying to fulfill my own desires and at the cost of my my wife, that's a recipe for divorce. Wow. And so it's a sober reminder that we're to keep our eyes focused on the Lord and keep Jesus centered in our marriage. Amen. Led by the Holy Spirit and in God's Word. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for uh, sharing some inform- insight on this. And I want to invite our church family to come out this Sunday, uh, as we have a guest speaker, mm-hmm. it's Garrett Beeler, mm-hmm. and services are at 8.30 and 10.45. And to keep you and Marie in prayer, because mm-hmm. you'll be heading up to a conference. I'll be doing a, co- a conference in wa- in the state of Washington. I think there are seven or eight churches that join together for a men's conference and pastors gathering. And so I'll be I'll be teaching a few times on, on Saturday. So we'll make sure we keep you in prayer and that uh, you guys have travel mercies. And, uh, and church family, we look forward to seeing you. And thank you for tuning in, and God bless you.